ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله I begin in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. We praise Him, we seek His guidance, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own shortcomings and mistakes. And whoever is guided by Allah, no one can misguide. And whoever does not receive the guidance from Allah, no one can guide. And I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad was his servant and his messenger. My dear believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahi rahmani rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha haqqa tukate wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. That all you who believe, be mindful of Allah, be conscious of Allah as is the right of Allah and you shall not depart from this world other than in a state of being a Muslim. This time of departure, no one knows. We sitting here, no one knows. People around the whole global world, no one knows when the time of departure is going to come. But the reminder for us is that we must be prepared. And the best preparation is that we must submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs and matters. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we depart from this world, we are counted among those that who are Muslim, that who have submitted themselves to Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ عَمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Again, we are being addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all you who believe, be conscious of Allah, be mindful of Allah, and speak in straightforward words. Be truthful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you will do so, if you will develop this quality within you of being truthful, then Allah will correct your deeds for your own benefits and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger indeed achieves a great success. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to always be truthful. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to follow His commandments and to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are in the month of Rabi al-Awwal. Alhamdulillah, we have been listening to talks, khutbas on the life and example of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And according to whichever calendar, either tomorrow or a day after is going to be the 12th of Rabbil Awwal, which is most commonly, commonly understood as the day of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we... You know, the ayah which I recited from Surah Ahzab, the last ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, whoever obeys Allah and his messenger indeed achieves a great success. Then, at another, in the same Surah Ahzab, the ayah number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You have indeed, in the, in the life and example of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a beautiful pattern. For anyone whose hope is in Allah in the final day, for anyone whose hope is in Allah in the final day, and who engages much in the praise of Allah, for them, the life and example of Rasulullah is a beautiful example to follow. And today, my brothers and sisters, this in these few moments, 
I would like to remind myself and all of us that we as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we as those who are you know, looking forward to our next life, the life of Jannah al-Firdaus, inshallah, for all of us. We are hoping for greater rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then how do we live our life? This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us. Whoever hopes, has hope with Allah and the next life, you have the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have the, the as, as they say, what is the key to success? The key to success is following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our affairs and matters. Few, you know, a uh, few months back, I was reading an article. And the article was about 10 habits of the most successful, likable leaders. 10 habits of the most successful and likable leaders. And, and in, in today's world, this, this industry of um, uh, how to improve yourself, how to become better leaders, how to become successful individuals, there is a billion dollar industry of not just books and publishing material, but lifestyle coaching and all of those things. And while I was reading this article about 10 habits of super likable, you know, successful leaders, which was written by Dr. Travis Bradbury. He's one of the authors of Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Some of you probably have read the book. And as I was reading it, I was, I was trying to think. And the examples from the life of Rasulullah was coming to my mind that how Rasulullah in different phases of his life, in different struggles, dealing with the kuffar and mushrikeen, his, his life with his family, his presence with his companions, his, him leading in the battles, him teaching them, all of those different examples were coming to my mind. And today, I thought that instead of directly you know, mentioning some of those events, we usually you know, read these articles. So I would like us to take some of the examples and put them in our life today. And while I was, re I was preparing for the khutbah, I also came across of a book. It was written by Dr. John Adair. He is one of the very well-known author of, he has written over 40 books on leadership and all. He has written a book which is called The Leadership of Muhammad So I would encourage all of you who like, just get a copy of that and inshallah we can benefit from it as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us inna ka la'ala khuluqin azim that Rasulullah his character was the best of the characters. So, knowing what we know, believing what we believe in, and loving our Prophet the way we love. Actually, a couple of days ago, I was you know, thinking about giving a khutbah on, on this aspect of when we say, Rasulullah was a sadiq and al amin the most truthful and the most trustworthy. And I, for, for some time I, when I was thinking about this khutbah, my thoughts were why the followers of Muhammad sallallahu as sadiq and al amin are suffering in today's world. Why the followers of Muhammad sallallahu the best example for the world. Rahmat alil alameen, mercy for the world. Why there are over 20, 30 million of the followers of Muhammad sallallahu are suffering in the floods in Pakistan. 
why the followers of Muhammad وسلم, are suffering in Afghanistan or Yemen or Sudan, Somalia, you name it, Syria, Palestine, Kashmir. So my mind was, <coughs> from this aspect, I was thinking, where have we fallen short of our love for the Prophet وسلم, and implementing in our life? <coughs> when he's the best of the examples, so as followers of Muhammad, there is something wrong that we have committed to ourselves. But then I thought that usually I give khutbahs on, on a positive note. So having said that, what I said, yeah, that is something for us to think about. It is a time of self-reflection for all of us, that as we celebrate the life and example of Rasulullah we must do a self-evaluation of ourselves, do an ihtisab of ourselves, accountability. That where have I fallen short in following the example of Muhammad وسلم, and what has happened to our ummah that we are suffering today in this world? Almost 90% of the refugees in the world today are Muslims. And, you know, Numbers are not looking very good when it comes to Muslims. When it comes to issues of rampant corruption in the Muslim world, we all know. So this is my request to all of us is a reflection for us that how can I make myself a better Muslim and better believer and better follower of Muhammad So that is a work for all of us. Inshallah, if every one of us makes this commitment that I will make sure that I'm going to be just two things, a sadiq and a lameen. That I'm going to be truthful and I'm going to be trustworthy. Let's take these two things. Life will change. Our conditions will change and Muslim world will change, inshallah. So coming back to now, the 10 most likable qualities of leaders. The first that Dr. Bradbury writes is that they have personal connection with the people who follow them. And we know from the seer of Rasulullah that how Rasulullah was so close to his companions. And Abr ibn al-As says, that the Prophet ﷺ used to be so attentive to him, he's talking about himself, that he thought that he was the best companion of Rasulullah. We're not talking about Abu Bakr as Siddiq or Umar al Khattab or Uthman. May Allah be pleased with all of them. But another companion that most of us rarely talk about, he said that Prophet ﷺ used to be so attentive to me that I used to think that I'm the most closest to the Rasulullah And this is one of the qualities of the most likable leaders, most successful leaders, that they develop personal connections. And I'm giving these examples and, and I would like to encourage all of us not to just think about when we think about leaders that you are leading a corporation, you are leading a non-profit, you are leading a business, but our leadership at home as Rasulullah reminded us that every one of us is a leader. You know? We have responsibility. We have maybe leader at home, in our businesses, in our offices, in, in different capacities. And this is something that we, some of the examples from the life and seerah of Rasulullah that we must develop in ourselves. And one of the things about attention, it is said that attention, attention is the most rarest and purest form of generosity. Giving someone your full attention is the most rarest and purest form of generosity. And we know that how Rasulullah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, someone would shake his hand, he would turn his whole self to the individual and looking straight at him. 
Many times we shake hands, we are looking this way. Right? If someone is not, so, we think is a very important person, we shake hands, we are looking different ways here and there. That was not the life of Rasulullah So he used to give full attention to his companions. Another example, a beautiful example, that one day Rasulullah walked into the market and one of his companions, Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a Bedouin, he was a poor man, he was a day laborer. So he was working in the market and his clothes were all dirty. Because of sweat, he didn't, you know, you know he was all dirty and sweaty. But Rasulullah saw him from the back and Prophet approached him quietly from the back and put his hands on his, on his eyes. And then Rasulullah said, as he jokingly, that, like loudly said in the market, that I am selling a slave who would like to buy this slave from him. And Zahir said, he recognized that it was Rasulullah He said, oh master, who will buy this poor wretched man? You know, I'm a poor wretched man, who will buy this from you? And Prophet ﷺ said, no, no. Don't say that. Allah, the Lord of throne, himself is your buyer. That was the love of Rasulullah for his companions. That no matter what their status was, no matter you know, if they came from a high status or a low status family or rich family or the poor family, Isa Sallam loved them. And Isa Sallam showed his love openly and he was not afraid of that. And just telling someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your buyer, what a great news that someone could get. Secondly, they are approachable. And Rasulullah was known to be a very approachable person. And we know that Surah Hujurat in the opening ayahs came reminding people that give some time privacy to Rasulullah because people were coming and at different times knocking on his door, calling his name, shouting out his name. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to re re reveal the revelations. Don't do that. Don't speak loudly in front of the Messenger of Allah That was because his quality of approach, appro being approachable. He did not shun away people. He did, he, was, he did not show arrogance towards people. He did not show anger towards people who were coming and wanting to meet with him. And Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala says that I never saw anyone consult his companions more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He encouraged consultation. He encouraged people to give their opinions and, and not shy away from giving their opinions. You know, many times at home, we don't even consult our wives or spouses or our children. We just say, this is my decision, take it or leave it. This is how it is going to be. But Rasulullah used to consult. And as, you know, Abu Huraira narrates, that he, he never saw anyone consult more than the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was, Rasulullah was a very humble person. You know, obviously, there are many, many examples of that. And we know that when people used to come, if there are people who are coming from outside to meet Rasulullah that they did not know how the Prophet of Allah looked like, وسلم, and they would walk into the masjid, and there are people sitting, and they would not be able to recognize just by looking at the people. Because Rasulullah was not sitting on a throne like kings would. He was not dressed in elaborate clothing, and fancy clothing to show that, you know, he, there was no pomp and show. He was just like his companions, sitting with them, chatting with them, laughing with them, teaching them. That was his style of Rasulullah his leadership style. There were no guards to protect him because there was already love in the hearts for, of the people. Another beautiful example is the example of Hudaybiyah. There are many lessons that we learn from the occasion of Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. But a beautiful example is that when a contract was being written, when Rasulullah was agreeing to the terms with, with the Quraysh, and when they raised a point that 
Muhammad Rasulullah, we cannot say that. You cannot write Muhammad Rasulullah. <coughs> and Rasulullah accepted and told Ali radiallahu ta'ala no, to erase Rasulullah. And he said, Oh Allah, O Messenger of Allah, I cannot do that. The Prophet because he couldn't read, he asked Ali radiallahu ta'ala, no, Tell me where Rasulullah is written. And he himself erased it with his own finger. You know, when they talk, you know, all the world and people talk about Islam and their, and how the violence and, and all of those things. These are the examples that we must share with people around us, my brothers and sisters. That Rasulullah his humility was at that level that he did not care, but he wanted to reach an agreement for peace. And he showed by his example that no, it doesn't matter. And he himself erased Rasulullah and he said Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He was very positive in his, in, in his thought and he encouraged his com companions to remain positive. No matter what adversity is befallen on you. Life has good days and bad days. There will be days that are challenging for us. There will be days that we are very happy and enjoying life. And it happens to all of us. And this is, especially it is important for us, that in the matters when there are difficulty and challenges, that we remain positive. We do not lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know from many, many examples that how Rasulullah remained positive in, in different adversities. And I remind all of us, the battle of trench. When there are 10,000 soldiers on the other side, all prepared to come and finish the, this small Muslim community. And what do Muslims do? On the suggestion of Salman al-Farsi, Rasulullah accepts the suggestion and the, a trench is dug on one side of the city. Think about it, that you are, have no means to protect your community and you tend to go with a, a, another new way of building a trench so that they cannot cross. Their horses cannot jump and come into the city. This is how you're protecting. But even then, when Rasulullah was digging trench with his own companions, he used to tell them that I am seeing that this is Quraysh's last attempt to destroy Islam and Muslims. And from now on, we will, be, we will rule over them. That was his positive attitude. Obviously, he was the messenger of Allah. But he gave that positive attitude to his companions. That our path is the right path. Our commitment is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay strong and inshallah victory will be yours. And then while doing digging the trench, there was a rock. And this is a beautiful famous story. That companions were not able to break the rock. And Rasulullah goes, hits it, breaks it, and then when there was like these sparks coming from the, from the rock, Prophet said that I'm seeing the victory of Muslims over Persia, Yemen, and Syria. You think about it that you are digging a trench to protect your community with the least number of arms and ammunitions that you can protect. But even at that time, Rasulullah was giving hope to his companions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow the life and example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisayil muslimin astaghfirullah. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد 
There are a few more points, but I will just conclude with one more point when it comes to the qualities of the leaders and likable leaders. One, in, one quality that I would encourage all of us to, to further enhance this quality among ourselves, which is recognition of talent and potential among the people that are around you. Knowing, and this is again goes to even within our own families, or you know, if you're parents, you have children, we know that our children, they have different potential and, and intellect levels. And so it, as it also goes in the community, in our organizations, in our masajid, even if we are running a volunteer program, knowing the talent and encouraging the, the, the talent to excel. This is sometimes happens within the organizations that if someone is leading they are leading for the next, you know, many, many years, and they are not developing the talent that, that is around themselves. And we know that Prophet ﷺ recognized the talent. And he developed that. He was not afraid of creating leaders because he knew that that was, this Islam is going to, inshallah, survive until the Day of Judgment is by building leaders. And we know that Rasul ﷺ when a lady came to Prophet of Allah asking for advice, and then she goes, what if next time I come and I don't find you? Rasulullah said, then go consult Abu Bakr. And she said, what if I don't find Abu Bakr? And the Prophet said, okay, then you go and find Omar. So that's, that's how Rasulullah developed his, his, the potential that were in his companions. Knowing Musab and his qualities, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Rasulullah sent him to Medina. Knowing the qualities that were given to Bilal, Prophet appointed him as the Muaddin. And not only that, he took him, they entered the Makkah, and Prophet asked Bilal to now go and make call the Adhan, knowing the potential of his companions. Khalid ibn Walid, he becomes a Muslim, knowing his potential of leadership and his quality being a good general, appoints him as the general. And different examples that we can see in the life and example of the seer of Rasulullah So, no matter what role we have in whatever capacity, develop ourselves first, improve ourselves. If we are, you know, Allah has given all of us different qualities and abilities. Find a way to improve. Find a way to become better in what Allah has given you. Find a way that you can better serve the community. And going back to what I started earlier, then also thinking about how can I, knowing where the Muslim Ummah is, how can I, with what Allah has given me, qualities and abilities, can help myself to become a better Muslim, better follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and help my community become better believers in Allah and, and followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow his commandments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da zhadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma inna ka anta al-wahhab. Allahumma khfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wal-amwat. Ibad Allah rahmakum Allah. إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر أقم الصلاة